It's 4.30 in the morning, and this train is on its way to the Melt Festival. It left Cologne seven hours ago, headed east. There are 700 people on board from Britain, France, Germany, and the Netherlands. They're gearing up to party, and this time they've left the cars at home. We get on with just a bag. It's better for the environment. I've never seen any kind of climate protection at a festival. I think it's great they're addressing it. That's why I'm taking the train, not a car. Ditching the cars cut their carbon footprint in half before the festival even begins. The train arrives in Ferropolis at 8 a.m. It was a coal mining town until the early 90s. Now, only these excavators are left as reminders. This weekend, 20,000 people from around Europe have come here for the festival. 150 bands and DJs from the electronic and indie music scenes are set to perform. The organizers have invited a scientist along to consult on the festival's climate impact, which is staggering. We know that from British studies. They're a bit further along than us. The average festival like this emits as much CO2 as a town of 50,000 residents. And a large part of it comes from electricity. But it's also caused by fans getting here. These festival goers have come here on bike. Now they're trying to see how much power a band needs to perform. They're generating electricity for the amps and instruments by pedaling. When the bikers fall short on stamina, the music cuts out. It's certainly exhausting out here in the sun. Meaning they'll have to wait a while for the next volunteers. Small initiatives like this seek to raise awareness on an individual level. But organizers are also keen to completely revamp the way the festival gets its energy. Finja Goetz shows guests from the music industry just how it's done. This year, solar panels have been installed on the rooftops of the event buildings. They produce enough electricity annually to power two festivals. Certainly a festival is never going to be environmentally friendly. We simply use too much energy. And then there are the flights to get all the artists here. Those two factors alone are why a festival can never be climate friendly. But as key players, we have to do everything in our power to reach an important target group. The cell phone charging station is powered by renewable energies. It's a hot spot at the festival since mobile phone use is so prevalent. Electricity for the station is generated by a wind turbine and solar unit. Festival goers can have their phones charged for just a euro, regardless of the make and model. In exchange, they get a ticket. What's that for? The pickup time is stamped on there, so people know when they should pick up their phones. The wait? Three hours. So why come here? It's the only alternative. It's cheap and it helps the environment. Representatives from the music and event industries have gathered here to see what measures melt organizers have already taken to protect the environment. What's exciting is that a festival here in Ferropolis, in Grafenheinichen, is organized the same way as a festival in Wacken, Rostock, Lisbon, Barcelona or Kiev. We exchange ideas to find out what can be improved. Communicating is the key so that others can start doing things differently and in a better way. After three days camping out on the festival grounds, there are about 200 tons of trash to deal with. Visitors pay a deposit when they arrive, and those who hand over a full bag of trash when they leave get their money back. Oh. 
All of that trash is deposited in a heap before garbage collectors come to pick it up. It's the last night of the festival, and running the lights uses as much power as 600 households in a year. But no one wants to celebrate in the dark. Better to keep working to create a greener festival.